Good evening, everyone. I am Banduka Kurupu, Technical Events Coordinator for Civil Engineering Sectional Committee. So this uh, today is our fourth session of this lecture series uh, on stru structural designs of uh, highway bridges. And I think Professor is just after a uh, session at university. So, sir, our sincere gratitude for your commitment in conducting this lecture series to uplift the knowledge of uh, practicing engineers. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, uh, I, uh, last week also I remind uh, I mentioned that uh, we have created a WhatsApp group for uh, sharing uh, uh, related uh, study materials and video recordings of this lecture. So today also I will share the link uh, in the chat box. Uh, and over to you, sir. Thank you, thank you, Vanika. Uh, just give me one minute to upload the open okay. the. But uh, So last time I explained uh, many things. Related so we can't hear you. Oh, you can't hear me? Just one moment. Then I will come on. Uh, just one moment. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Now we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, sir, some echoing sound is there. Now it's okay. Now it's okay. I have uh, just yeah, yeah. That's because okay. uh, what has happened is uh, there's something wrong with my computer. So I'm uh, I'm talking to the phone while presenting on the screen. So you uh -huh. hear from through, through my phone and uh, I'm talking, uh, what I'm presenting is on the computer, but uh, what you hear is from the phone. So I have, uh, so so it's okay. Now, now it, they won't be a call because I have turned off the microphone of the computer. Now yeah, you can now hear me. Right, okay. Now so, it's fine. Right. So last time we talked a lot about concrete technology related things and uh, so why uh, Reinforced concrete is not as good as pre-stressed concrete. And then uh, we uh, uh, talked about, you know, what has happened historically 
and then uh, how to uh, get rid of some of the materials in the bridge and go for beam slab type bridges rather than complete slab type bridges. And uh, then uh, we have uh, talked about the kind of reinforcement that you need and uh, uh, what is the type of situations that you can uh, handle uh, when you have, uh, when you want to go for foundations rather than going for uh, deep foundations with piles, how you can make use of uh, the large uh, foundations by using uh, cement mixed with ABC. So those are the things we covered. And uh, uh, Manu, can you tell me whether I explain how to do the, the, I think I have already explained how we can make a mixed design. I explained it in great detail earlier. Yes, sir. To a certain yeah, extent, yeah. it was explained. Yeah, 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 yeah. So today, what I do is I'll uh, go a little deeper into the Euro code and explain uh, the, the design method of the Euro. Okay. Right. So I will explain the design method of the Euro code. And uh, last time I explained that, you know, we can, when you want to find the strength of concrete, we can either use uh, uh, the cube strength. On the other hand, we can use cylinder strength. Then I uh, explained uh, what is meant by 0.45 times FCU, but I have not gone uh, very much deep into it. So today what I do is, uh, Assuming that uh, you are capable of designing a beam, I will actually go into the details of Euro code. And uh, so now I'm going to share the screens and also share the white screen with you. Right. So, uh, right. So, uh, now you can see the uh, white screen. Is that right? Um, screen is not uh, the visible, white sorry. white color one. White color yeah. one. The papers are uh, can be yeah, paper, seen. Paper, paper, yeah. Yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so let's see uh -huh. the 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 fundamentals of. Uh, um, so what is the difference between cube based testing and the cylinder? And uh, this is civil engineering sectional committee on 13th, 3, 2, 2, 23, page number one. Right, okay. So let's see. Uh, I told you that when we test a cube, uh, we are going to get a strength. And uh, actual strength is 0.8 times FCU. And then I explained that uh, we. Uh, consider that uh, we are comparing, we are testing for in compression and uh, we are using in, it in flexion. So to, to relate these two, we multiply it by 0.85 because we are testing in compression, but we are using in flexion. So, so a 0.85 factor has been introduced. 0.8 times 0.85 is 0.68. So we say uh, the strength of concrete is 0.67 divided by 1.5 times FCU. So when you are dealing with the key. So what happens when you are dealing with the cylinder? When you are dealing with the cylinder, we don't have this uh, effect of thick plates of the concrete testing machine. We don't have the effects of this thick a uh, concrete uh, testing machine, right? The reason is uh, cylinder is tall. So this effect is negligible because uh, these areas can have this uh, strain, stress without any restriction and it can uh, be what we get is the actual strength. Then, then we call this FCK. So what is the flexural strength? Flexural strength, in compression, flexural strength is compression is 0.85 times FCK. 
flexural strength in uh, compression is 0.85 times FCK. It's the same same relationship that we use for uh, cubes. We use the same. We use it for uh, cylinders as well. We use it for cylinders as well. Right. Then we have to get the uh, characteristics. That means we have to divide this by 1.5, which is a factor of safety. And uh, I'm using the Euro code notation. There's something wrong. Uh, you are viewing Mohammed Nizam's screen. What, what is that? Why is that? Hmm. There's something wrong uh, with the Zoom. You are seeing the full screen now, I hope. We are seeing somebody else's screen. Yes, <clears throat> that's happening. Yeah, someone is sharing his screen. Uh, I, uh, Mohammed, I will, uh, screen. Yeah, we will. Uh, oh, now it. it's okay. Now it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Right. So, uh, when you when you uh, get 0.85 divided by 1.5. Point five six seven, sir. Yeah, point eight five divided by one point five, uh, you get point five six seven. Right. FCK. So earlier we got point four five FCU. Now we are getting point five six seven. Right. So let's see how we can uh, deal with the uh, euro code. Right. How we can deal with euro code. So. Uh, now we have a cube. Uh, we have a cylinder that we have tested, and we found that the strength is FCK. And if you look at the uh, Euro code, it says C2530. Uh, then it says C3037. There are various strengths. And 30 means cylinder, 37 means cube. So we have to see how we can make use of this to determine the reinforcement in a beam or a slab when it is subjected to a load. And uh, you know we want to determine the reinforcement quantity, reinforcement quantity. So what is the theory behind it? So for that, first we have to look at the stress-strain curve. Stress strain curve and uh, the concrete stress strain curve goes like this, and its its final strain is zero point zero zero three five, and uh, we say that it is reached at a stress of 0.567 FCK because that is the maximum stress we can allow in uh, concrete. And uh, so that is the uh, situation with concrete. This is the situation with concrete. Then, then we have to look at steel. Go straight, then it tries to deviate, and we get 0.2% proof stress. And uh, we come this way. And if we say y divided by 1.1. So you get uh, the strength of steel divided by 1.15. So you get 0.87 times the strength of steel. So on one side, we have a stress strain curve for steel. And the other side, we have a stress strain curve for uh, concrete. 
Now, uh, this is page number two. Now, uh, we look at Now, we know what is the elastic modulus of steel, 200 kilonewtons per millimeter squared. And we are using uh, 500 megapascal steel and 500 multiplied by 0 0.87. 500 multiplied by 0 0.87. We get 435. And then we have to find the corresponding strain. And uh, that is uh, sigma is equal to E times epsilon. And what we want is epsilon, and that is sigma divided by E. That is 435 divided by uh, 200 into 10 to the power 3. So we get. For 135 divided by 200. So you get uh, epsilon is 0 0.00217. Right. Now we know what is the strain at which concrete yields, uh, steel yields, and the strain at which steel uh, concrete crushes. So this is the strain at which uh, steel yields. And 0 0.0035 is the uh, strain at which concrete crushes. So now we can draw a stress strain curve. So before doing that, I would like to like you to uh, appreciate the difference between steel and concrete. Steel and concrete. So in steel, if you have an I section, we say, you know, the, the beam then we can say the stress diagram is like that and m over i is equal to sigma over i this is a bending formula that we all know and uh, to for this to be valid plane sections should remain plane and elastic it should be elastic behavior, not plastic behavior. Within the elastic range, MOI is equal to sigma OI is applicable. So, uh, but concrete behaves differently. Concrete behaves as a cracked material below the neutral axis. Concrete behaves as a cracked material below the neutral axis, but still we assume plane sections remain plane. So the strain diagram will be like this. Still, we assume plane sections will remain plane, and because of that reason, the strain diagram will be like this. So, we have to first appreciate that this particular behavior that is below the neutral axis, concrete is cracked. And uh, so, if you get a section uh, behaving as an elastic material, this is the stress diagram. So, this is the stress in steel. These are the stress in concrete. But uh, if you look at the strain diagram, it will be like this. So, uh, can you understand it? So, so what we do is, now let's look at a, a very special situation. And that is, we have a concrete section that is going to crush at 0 0.0035 and at the same time the strain in steel has just reached the, this limiting value of 0 0.00217 and uh, this is the depth to the uh, steel reinforcement and this is x is the depth to the neutral axis so the section looks like this and here you get at this level some reinforcement and uh, all this area is in compression and below cracked. 
So let's see uh, this whole depth dimension is D up to this point from the top five is D. Then this is D minus X. Then you can say 0 0.0035 divided by X is equal to 0 0.00217 divided by D minus X. And from this, we can say 0 0.0035 D is equal to uh, 0 0.0035 X plus 0 0.00217 X. And X over D ratio is uh, 0 0.0035 divided by uh, 0 0.0035 plus 0 0.00217. So you get a value like this. Right. So uh, then what you get is X over D and we can actually calculate the X over D ratio with this. And that is uh, Zero point zero zero three five divided by zero point zero zero three five plus zero point zero zero two one seven, and the answer is x over d is equal to zero point six one seven. Then now we have to ask the question: Is this acceptable? Is, this, is it acceptable to have concrete crushing as soon as steel reaches a yield point? Answer is no. Why? Because we like to get a warning. If you want to get a warning before failure, what we need? We need steel yielding before concrete crushes. We like to see steel yielding before concrete crushes. So what is that condition? To fulfill this condition, the, this code says, now we can't go for this type of situation. The maximum we can allow for X is this, and X, over X is maximum value of X is 0.45D. So we can't go up to 0 0.617 and it says this and then what happens? The strain in steel becomes very high, which means the steel yields. And when the steel yields, what happens to the concrete? We are in some, somewhere here, steel is yielding. So what will happen to the concrete? Concrete will start cracking and cracking in concrete means it's going to fail. So we panic and we, we don't use the bridge. So that is the situation we like to have. So what we do is, so we like to see that, uh, you know, X over D, uh, Maximum is 0.45 or X maximum is 0.45 times D. Now let's see how to make use of this. Some of that. Now let's see what will happen if we are going to have a moment which is large enough for X to be 0.45 times D. So we have a moment which is large enough for X to be 0.45 times B. The breadth of the section is B. And we are going to have some steel, uh, adequate amount of steel at a depth D. And let's derive an equation for the uh, maximum moment carrying capacity. Let's derive an equation for the maximum moment carrying capacity without using any compression reinforcement. That is as singly reinforced. 
So this beam is singly reinforced, and as you can see, it has only uh, one set of main reinforcement that that is close to the bottom, and we don't have any special bars in the compression zone. We don't have any special bars in the compression zone. So what happens now? So what happens now is we know bending moment is equal to force times lever arm. And uh, if you look at this section, again, we have to see how we can uh, find this force. And to find the force, we have to see under which situation we are in. So we have the neutral axis at 0.45D. So what happens when you are loading a section? Initially, it will be like this, a triangular stress. That means, if you look at the stress strain curve for concrete, we are somewhere here. Now, that is number one. We are somewhere there. Now, we, we can keep on applying the load. It might be like this. That means we are somewhere there too. And we keep on loading, then it will become something like this, this number three. And we say we are somewhere there, close to failure. And we call it ultimate. Ultimate moment carrying capacity of a section. So we know now, you know, when you try to deal with the rectangular parabolic situation, it takes a lot of uh, time very difficult to do the calculations. So we are given an equivalent stress block and that has a magnitude of 0.567 FCK and uh, depth to the, uh, this depth is S and S is equal to 0.8 times X. Is that clear? Then now we can find the lever arm that is from the center point to the uh, reinforcement. And that is D minus S by two. And uh, that is the lever arm, we said, is D minus S by two. And S is 0.8 times X. X is equal to 0.45 times D. So we are considering a very special case where the, the beam is carrying its maximum moment and we want to see what is the maximum moment? So when the beam is carrying its maximum moment, the maximum uh, depth of concrete section will occur. And the maximum depth of concrete section is 0.45 times T. So this is the situation. So now you can write, uh, write an equation for the bending moment. The bending maximum bending moment is equal to force. So what is the force? Force is stress. 0.5671 times FCK times multiplied by the breadth of the section and the depth of the section. And depth of the section is S and S is 0.8 times X, 0.8 times X and X is 0.45D. So that is the force multiplied by lever arm. Lever arm is D minus S, that is half. S means uh, 0.8 times X. And X means 0.45 times B. So we get an equation like that. And if you like, uh, multiply all these numbers, uh, you have to multiply. First, we can find what is this uh, lever arm. And we are talking about the minimum lever arm. And the lever arm is uh, one minus one minus point five times point eight multiplied by point four five. So you get point eight two. Is it? So is said minimum is point eight two times is said times d. What is is it maximum? There's a maximum value given that is 0.95 times. What it says is, you know, you can't have 
a very thin section on the compression. It has to be of substantial thickness. And uh, to get that, the Z maximum value is limited to 0.95 times D. Is that clear? Now we can sort out this equation. Bending moment is equal to force. Force is uh, 0.567 multiplied by 0.8 multiplied by 0.45, multiplied by 0.82, that is 0.282 times D, and you get 0 0.167 uh, FCK B D squared. So that is the maximum value of, uh, uh, that is the maximum value of uh, bending moment that this can carry as singly reinforced. So can you understand how I got it? I have considered a very special case. The special case is uh, the steel has already yielded and uh, the, there's a huge force taken by concrete and that is the maximum force we can allow because there are limitations. The one limitation is, you know, you cannot go uh, below uh, 0.45 times D uh, for the stress block. And uh, then uh, when you consider the equivalent stress block, you have to again consider additional conditions, right? So we are then using all this special case where everything is stress maximum, uh, we have derived a formula and that formula gives the maximum bending moment carrying capacity of a concrete section without using any compression steel, only the steel. We use steel, but it's only for uh, tension. No compression steel. The whole compression is taken by concrete and uh, that's the uh, concrete is a very good material for carrying compression. So we don't have any problem with that. Is that clear? This, this equation is very, very important. And uh, because the uh, bending moment is given by 0.167 times FCK, multiplied by BD squared. And uh, if you are familiar with BS8110, you would find another equation which says uh, bending moment is equal to 0.156 FCU BD squared. So it's also very similar equation, very similar equation. Any questions up to now? If you want, you can ask. If you have any questions, please ask. And uh, I think you can include it in the chat channel, chat box as well. So join here, right? Right. So, so we don't have any messages of uh, significant nature in the. Uh, chat and uh, so I'll continue right okay so basically this is the situation now let's look at little more theory and that is uh, you know how to find the reinforcement now to find the reinforcement uh, we have used various methods but we are going to find the rein reinforcement by using fundamentals so we have a beam and we know uh, it has a depth to the neutral axis x. And there's only some area in compression and that is called S. And S is equal to 0.8 times x. And we are going to have some reinforcement here, satisfying the cover requirements for durability. And uh, We know the section, we know the breadth of the section, we know the cover requirement, so that means we know the depth, D value, depth to the uh, middle of the reinforcement, D is also known. If you know the cover required, say 45 millimeters or 40 millimeters or 50 millimeters, immediately you can decide the D value provided. The overall depth, H is known. 
So H is something again you select something like 600 millimeters. So whatever the value that you select, right? H is the value that you select. Breadth is the value something like 300 millimeters. Again you select. And then uh, somebody has said, you know, it is supporting a continuous beam subjected to a bending moment of 70 kilonewtons per meter. I'm just taking one example, just to give you some numerical values. And uh, let's say the bending moment is, uh, let's say the span is six meters. And uh, so you can get six, So you might get a bending moment of about 132, 240 kilonewton meters here, and a bending moment of about 200 to 240 might appear over the support. So let's uh, concentrate on this section, assuming that the bending moment is going to be something like 240 kilonewton meters. Now we have a situation and how we are going to deal with it. So that is the uh, rule, uh, either the situation, 240 kilonewton meters. And we want to see uh, how much reinforcement is needed to resist 240 kilonewton meters by uh, 600 by uh, 300 section out of FCK equals 30 megapascal. That means uh, we are going to use 30 megapascal concrete for, for this 600 by 300 section. And uh, we have to find the, the amount of reinforcement needed to carry a bending moment of 240 uh, kilonewton meters. Now, how do we solve this problem? So we can write two equations. The first one is bending moment is equal to force in steel multiplied by lever down. So what is the force in steel? 0.87 times F5 times area of steel. And your arm is Z. And what is the Z value? Z is equal to D minus S by 2. So that is 0.87 times Fy is, and that will be D minus S by 2. If you look at this diagram, you can see uh, Z is distance to the center, center of this from here. So that is D minus S by 2, because this particular distance is S by 2. We have a rectangular stress block. So the center of the stress is at the center of uh, this stress block. So the lever arm is uh, the distance between uh, steel and centroid of concrete. That is the lever arm because in the upper part, the force, compressive force is carried by concrete. And here in the lower part, uh, steel carries the tension. So we have a tensile force, compressive force. They are acting at a distance, so they can they can resist a moment. So that is the theory. So uh, we get this number six, and then now we have a problem. Now how do you find this? It? How do you find this? It? Now that is the big question. And to find this, it, I'll show you. Uh, we can do a small calculation and uh, I will show you that. I will uh, share the screen now. Just one moment.
just a small uh, delay with that small technical fall, but I'm fixing it. Uh, right. Okay, now I'm going to share the screen. <clears throat> and uh, share the screen. Uh, can you see the screen? Yes, you can see the screen. And uh, so, when we have to deal with this situation, we have to think about uh, the various concrete properties. And uh, here you can see uh, trend, FCK 25, FCU 30, 30, 37, 35, 45, 40, 50. 45, 55, 50, 60. So those are the uh, uh, cylinder strength and cube strength. And then uh, you get uh, various other parameters like tensile strength of concrete, the elastic modulus of concrete, and so on. And here you get the elastic modulus of concrete. Then uh, Then from this, uh, you know, you can decide the lifespan of a structure. And uh, depending on the way you are going to cast it, you can come up with uh, a particular power, a particular class requirement. And then from this start, you can decide how much power is needed. So for bridges, generally we we'll go for about uh, 40 millimeter power. Uh, because uh, you know bridges are outside and we like to have a reasonable cover so uh, some typical value is 40 millimeters uh, when it is outside surface so that's a value that is often used in sri lanka but uh, if you want to allow for some construction tolerances you can go up to uh, 45 or 50 millimeter cover you can go up to about 45 or 50 millimeter cover so we'll uh, come to that uh, So we we'll come to that later uh, when we want to get the real uh, cover for a actual situation. So we'll come back to this later. But uh, so this is the this is the theory that I've been explaining, and you can see S is equal to 0.8 times x, and uh, you can also see 0 0.0.0035 0 and the maximum strain here and 0.567 FCK also can be seen. So, now uh, we, have a, uh, we have a situation where we like to know the, uh, the uh, moment carrying capacity, but uh, what we like to know is Z value. What we like to know is Z value. And uh, so, uh, Basically, uh, we have a situation when, where we have uh, concrete in compression, steel in tension, and we have a neutral axis at a depth of x, and uh, so we have a force FCC, and we have a force F. So, and if you look at the stress diagram, comes like this, and it is 0.567 FCK. So, basically, I will uh, stop share for a moment. Uh, and you can see the situation where we have a section like this. And uh, uh, part is in compression. This is the sign tension. And then uh, this is the FCC, uh, that is uh, the uh, 
force in concrete, and this is FSHST, that is the force in steel. That is the force in steel. Right. So that's the situation. And uh, so if you want to uh, look at the equilibrium, we can say the river arm is set. The bending moment M is equal to FCC times Z or FST times Z. So now we look at, uh, I'll stop, I'll share the screen again. And here you can see. FCC is equal to 0.567 FTK multiplied by the breadth of the section multiplied by S and then Z is equal to D minus S by 2 and S is equal to twice D minus Z. Twice D minus Z. And uh, so we can say FCC is equal to 0 0.567 multiplied by 2. One point one three four FTK multiplied by B multiplied by D minus C. And uh, then we can say M is equal to FCC times Z, that is 1.134 FCK B D minus Z multiplied by Z. And then we can say M is equal to FCK M divided by TK B D squared is equal to 1.134 FCK. B, D, and here we have taken B, D squared. So you get one minus Z over D. And Z over D. And Z over D. So you get Z over D squared. Minus Z over D plus, and we call this parameter K. And so you get K divided by 1.134 is equal to zero. And this is a second order equation of Z over D. So we can find the solution straight away. We can find the solution straight away. Is that clear? Just one moment. I'll stop sharing. Right. So what you get is bending moment m is equal to FCC times Z or FST times Z. And then we found that FCC is 1.134 times FCKB B minus Z. And then the moment is 1.134 times FCK B D minus Z times Z and we substitute a value called K for M, M of FCK B D squared and uh, that is equal to 1.134 FCK 1 minus Z over D times Z over D because I have, I have divided this by D squared both sides I have divided by D squared. So then we can get a second order equation like this.
and uh, this is uh, page number seven. So what we can do is we can find the solution for this. Uh, and x is equal to ma minus b plus or minus square root of b square minus 4ac divided by uh, 2a. So here you get minus b. Sorry. So then z over d is equal to minus b, and that is 1 plus or minus uh, square root of b squared. So that is uh, 1 squared minus 4. And uh, a is 1, t is k over 1.134. So you get divided by 2. Divided by 2. So you can write this equation as 0.5 plus. Uh, so I'll write the equation, and you can see it's given in the uh, in the note as well. And uh, let's see uh, the value. I'll share the screen again, and here you can see uh, z is equal to d. Z or d is equal to 0.5 plus uh, 0.25 minus. Uh, here you get 4k over 1.134. So because uh, we have a 2 here, so when you divide it by 2, because area you get 0.25 minus k over 134. So the equation is you get z over d equals 0.5 plus square root of 0.25 minus k over 1.13. And if I stop sharing, you can see this question. It's here. So you can get this equation. And once you have this equation, you can straight away find the Z value. So we can uh, share the screen again. So you can straight away find the Z value. And then we can find the reinforcement as well. Then you can find the reinforcement as well. So uh, we'll uh, look at an example now, just to give you uh, some idea. And uh, we'll go for the example that we earlier looked at. And that is uh, 600 millimeter deep beam and 300 millimeters wide, uh, 30 megapascal. And let's say 45 millimeters of power and so you can see we look at the early example 600 millimeter beam 300 millimeters wide 30 megapascal concrete and we are going to get some reinforcement and here you are going to get some reinforcement and some nominal bars there now, the most important thing is to find what is this depth and what is Z. Now, to find Z, we have a equation, but there you can get this K factor. So, the bending moment is 240 kilonewton meters. So, the bending moment is also known. So, what you do is first you find K is equal to M over. FCK BD squared. For this, you have to find that D, D is equal to 600 minus 45 minus 10 millimeter links minus, let's say we are going to use 20 millimeter bars, 20 divided by 2, 600 minus 45 minus uh, 10, uh, 500. 45, so you find D is equal to 535 millimeters. D is equal to 535 millimeters. So this will become 240 into 10 to the power 6 divided by FCK 30 multiplied by 300 multiplied by 535 squared. So you get uh, KS.
so i have 40 divided by 30 divided by 300 500 by 0 0.093 less than 0 0.16 so that means the section can be singly reinforced. We don't need any compression reinforcement. Then we can go for this equation. Z over D is equal to 0.5 plus square root of 0.25 minus K over 1.134. So it is equal to 0.5 times plus square root of 0.25 minus uh, 0 0.093 divided by 1.134. Is it is equal to 0.25 minus 0 0.0093 divided by 1.14 4 0.25 minus then not 93 divided by 1.134 equals star root answer plus 0.5, so that uh, is it as 0 0.909 D, or if you look at the value, that is 535 into uh, 0 0.909, and that is 486 millimeters. 486 millimeters, and then we know is it. Now we can uh, find the reinforcement. The reinforcement is equal to M is equal to 0.87 FY ST AS multiplied by Z and M is 240 into 10 to the power 6 is equal to 0 0.87 into 500 into AS multiplied by uh, 486 millimeters and then from this you can find the area of steel as is equal to 240 to the power 6 divided by 0.87 divided by 500 divided by 486 so you get uh, 1 1 1135 millimeters squared so you can use two numbers of 25 plus one number of 20 so you get 419 to 2 plus 314 and uh, that is 490 into 2 plus 314. So you get 1294 millimeters square. So you can uh, do the detailing of the beam like this. And here you need 25 bars, H25. And that is H20. And the area is 1294. And uh, the power is 45. And you get a power of 10. Then you get 20 and or 25. And uh, the width is 300. And 30 megapascal. So that is the simple method that can be used for calculating the reinforcement in the in case of a, a beam or even a slab used in the euro code. So I just did it. It's a simple calculation, not a difficult one, but I did it fully just to for the completion of the lecture. So so that means if you know the bending moment, we have no problem. Now look, now let's see, let's come back to our reinforced concrete design of the uh, bridge. 
and we are talking about something like beams at a spacing and uh, it's loaded with panels and we are going to fill this with concrete giving a thickness of 200 millimeters and these can be about 300 to 350 and how it can be about uh, to 400 to 600 and we are going to make the bridge by recasting these panels containing some reinforcement now you have to see what is the reinforcement needed in the beam what is the reinforcement needed in the beam and what is the reinforcement needed in the so which means the theory we have just covered can be used provided that you can find the bending moment provided that you can find the bending moment so that is the design method and then it comes boils down to a simple question how are you going to find the how are you going to find the moment how are you going to find the moment is that clear so basically this is the simple optimized bridge and uh, we wanted to know how to get uh, the reinforcement calculated and uh, you can see we are casting we are going to cast it in several stages so we have to understand the loading sequence we have to understand the loading sequence so what is the first stage we cast the concrete beam on round, we cast the concrete beam, which may be about six to eight meters or even longer. We can go up to about 12 meters. And then what we do is we lift it up, place it on the supports. Supports are buttons and piers. And if you want, if you like, you can do a prop as well at two points. Sometimes giving a prop is not that feasible. Generally, when you are giving a prop, we give the prop at one third point. When we give up, if you are giving a prop, we give the prop at one third point. On the other hand, this beam can be uh, designed for whatever the moment that is coming. But uh, we have to be a little careful here. Uh, I'll explain the reason. So, uh, if you are going with props, then uh, then only a smaller span of the beam is loaded. Otherwise, if we are not going to pop, the full length of the beam will get loaded when the self weight is not a major problem. The moment you place the beams, place the slabs, this will become loaded. And then we are going to place a concrete test. So that's why we, I said it's good to have some supports at one third. So it's good to have some support at one third point. Then how it's going to be? Then once this concrete has hardened, it is a structure like this. And we have to analyze it for the weight of the vehicles. We have to analyze it for the weight of the vehicles. So to analyze this for the weight of the vehicles, we use various theories. And uh, one of the options available is to go for SAP 2000 analysis. SAP 2000 analysis by creating a grid of beams like this and apply the loads appropriately as given in whatever the code you have selected and then find the bending moment. So what you have to understand is when you cast it, when it will stress, you say no stress. When you place the beams, if you provide it without the 
supports in the middle, uh, it can be subjected to higher stress. On the other hand, you can keep it, uh, you can keep it propped, keep the beam propped. So I'm talking about six to eight meter long bridge beam that can be kept propped. And later, when the full composite action is available, uh, then we can uh, remove the props and allow the loads to come. So that is one of the options available. The other option available is, you know, uh, you do the casting without um, without props, but then uh, we will need a lot of reinforcement for carrying the weight of the uh, deck before the composite action is available. So when the bridge is hardened, all these are going to act as one unit because we are we are placing something. So all these are going to act like one unit. So uh, you can uh, always apply the loads that are, that will be transferred. Uh, based on the vehicles and other things. Right. So this is the situation. Now we we'll see how we can model it for analysis. So uh, we have to first decide how these roads are coming. What is the nature of the road? What is the nature of the road? And let's say we are going to have a two-lane highway giving a weight of uh, 10 meters and then side box 1.5 meters. Which of the side box will be 1.5 meters. Now we have to develop a solution. What is the solution? So here we get 1.5 meters, and here you get 3.5 meters. Here you get 3.5 meters. Here you get 1.5 meters. So the next question is how are you going to arrange the beams? How are you going to arrange the beams? So to arrange the beams, we can make use of one beam at the corner and the next beam somewhere here at a distance of 1.5 meters center of the center. And then uh, we can have uh, two more beams. So up to here, we have to go for another 3.5 meters. And what can you say about the distance? So this will be about 1.75. So once you arrange the beams uh, like this, and the last one, and uh, you can cast the deck. And then uh, you can place the message. The very cost, sorry, the concrete above, and you can have sometimes the very cost about to prevent skidding. So that is uh, page number eleven. Now your task will be to find the bending moment. So for that, what we do is we draw a grid of beams. Like that. And then we fix at this location. 
and uh, rest uh, we uh, can allow it to move and uh, do whatever it wants so to represent it in the other direction we need large number of beams at uh, smaller spacing sufficient spacing and then what we do is we are going to apply the load so if they are at one meter interval then we can apply a load of uh, five kilonewtons per meter consider that this at one meter you can apply a load of five kilonewtons per meter over a width of 1.5 Now you have to simulate what is going on with uh, this nine kilonewtons per mega square load on a three meter area. Three meter area. So over every three meter, you get you should get a load. But here you can see we are we are little away from that. So. Over a three meter lane, we have to get a lot of nine kilometers per meter squared. And uh, if uh, I'm not very sure whether you can recall it, and I'll quickly go to the other uh, file. Just one moment. Right. So, uh, when you look at the loads, you can see we can apply nine kilonewtons per meter square load, and uh, we have to consider this particular uh, load that is acting, which is having a magnitude of three hundred kilometers. Three hundred. Right. So, when you create a village, the advantage is now you have to see. Well, this load is acting over nine, you know, now nine, nine, but over width of three meters. So up to this point, now you can apply nine kilonewtons per meter line load. So you can apply it, but you have to see that you know you have to stop somewhere there. Then in the other lanes, now this still the lane is not over, so you have come up to uh, these 1.5 meters. Then you go for another 1.5 meters, and the remaining portion is 0.25. Meters. So sometimes you will find that uh, it's uh, not a major problem. So you can actually uh, apply nine over the full width. And uh, just consider it as it is, right? So uh, we'll apply nine kilometers per meter over the full width because those are the locations that the beams are coincide. So, so when you apply all these loads on the transverse members, what will happen? You get a drainage, which is a frame of horizontal members subjected to vertical load. Uh, so basically, by looking at this, now what you do is uh, you can create a village and apply the loads in a reasonable manner and then run it and then get the bending moment. And you have to get the most critical bending moment, right? So that's the procedure. And uh, first thing is to create a village. And if I want, I can show you some of the simple villages that we have. Created. So, analyzing a bit is uh, not extremely uh, complicated. Only thing is, you have to uh, look at now, this is a village for a beam, particular bridge beam. And uh, once you create uh, these loads, you can either apply it as a transverse load or a, a line load. But uh, 
sometimes uh, applying the loads on the on the transverse wheels is preferred is preferred and uh, then once you apply the loads you can get the bending moments and when you know the bending moments you can always find the reinforcement because i have just explained how to find the reinforcement uh, when the grade of concrete at the bending moment is known so that is the a procedure that we have to use and I'll uh, stop share and, uh, and then if you uh, yes sorry I'll share it Right. So using these methods, so you can see from the village, you can get all the bending moments, shear forces, torsional moments. And uh, then you can actually go for this particular uh, arrangement of uh, precast beams and precast slabs. And then uh, because uh, you can. Uh, the moment you apply the relay chances, find the bending moments, then you can find the reinforcement. And I have already explained how to find the reinforcement. So this is the method. And again, uh, to start to get a good start in this particular presentation, we have given the, the kind of reinforcement needed at each section. So, so a lot of information is given in this presentation. And uh, we don't expect you to use uh, these values, but this will be a good starting point. You can have a look and see uh, what are the values that you can use. So any questions on this? So, uh, so when you have reinforced concrete structures like this, uh, first thing is what we do is we optimize the structure. And then we have to analyze the structure, get bending moments and shear forces, and then we have to uh, find the reinforcement needed in the beams and slabs. So that is the design method. To find the reinforcement in the beams and slabs, uh, you have to you can make use of the examples, uh, uh, examples, uh, example that uh, we have just discussed. So uh, in that one, I showed you how to find the reinforcement when the section is known. So uh, any questions on this? So if you want to optimize. A reinforced concrete structure. Uh, don't go for a slab bridge. If you just go for a slab, then you are losing a lot of uh, concrete because concrete is cracked in a slab bridge. And then, uh, in addition to it being cracked, it, it will add to the weight of the structure. So, because of that reason, uh, I told you that you know we prefer removing some part of the structure like this, removing it. And then, uh, so, so we like to uh, structure, so we like to remove part of the slab and come up with beam slab construction. And once you come up with beam slab construction, you have to see how to find the reinforcement uh, after performing an analysis using SEM 2000 or any other software. So that is the real ground situation with respect to reinforced concrete bridges. And they are actually economical. They can be made out of high strength concrete. You can, uh, if you can buy some admixture, then you can easily uh, use admixture when you are doing the site-based uh, uh, precasting operation. And uh, so, so when it is uh, uh, flowing type concrete, you can easily for it and get a good quality uh, finish. And also when you go with the high strength um, uh, concrete by using fly ash, what happens is these reactions will occur over a long period of time. And then you can end up with really tough section for uh, concrete. And when you have a tough section for concrete, the steel will be properly protected so you can easily hit uh, 80 to 100 year or even more uh, durability. 
So that is the position and uh, time is almost up. And if you have any correct, uh, uh, any, uh, any uh, questions I can ask, answer. How can you decide spacing of beams in the inboard direction? So actually when you are doing the grillage, uh, we don't have actual beams in this uh, other direction, but it's a good question. And that is, you know, when you are doing the precasting operation, that is something I missed. It's a good, good question. So uh, you have to ask, you have to consider what is the width of the slab. And this is going to be a 200 millimeter thick slab. And uh, precast, what we precast can be about 9 to 200 millimeter. So uh, if you cast this for a width of 150 millimeters, then we can uh, optimize the reinforcement because uh, we can have this at 150 spacing. And here you can get 75. So when you place uh, two slabs, the Jason slabs, it nicely fits because we have some reinforcement and then we have this and the gap here is 150 and the gap here also 150. So when you go with the slab width of 150, uh, you can actually uh, get a spacing of for the reinforcement of uh, uh, 150 millimeter. In a slab, it's uh, usual to expect something like 12 millimeter bars. Sometimes when you do the calculations, you can find even five millimeter bars would be, uh, or even 10 millimeter bars would be sufficient. So uh, have I answered your question on how to uh, decide on the spacing of beams? And other than that, there's no specific reason, but don't uh, try to have a huge uh, spacing for the, for the be precast beams, because they, we are going to place the precast panels on it. And uh, uh, what happens is, uh, when you apply precast, when you keep the precast uh, panels on the existing beam, we have to think about the weight of the panel if we don't have a frame. So these panels also would be heavy. Uh, we need about four people to handle the handle a, uh, a beam, uh, sorry, a slab. So we, because you know, we are talking about of 1.5 meter length and a thickness of about 90 millimeter or 80 millimeter. And then, uh, you know, uh, we are also talking about uh, uh, the length is 1.5, thickness is about 80, 90, and uh, the width is 450. So, so it's a, if you look at the weight of this uh, one with 1.5 meter uh, spacings, 450 multiplied by 80. And that is, uh, divided by 10 to the power 9. Ten to the power nine. So that is uh, then you have to multiply sorry. So that is uh, 1.5 into 0.45 into 0.08 into 25. So 1.35 kilonewtons or 135 kilograms. So this panel is going to be about 135 kilograms. So, uh, so you have to be little careful. If you select a two meter spacing for the longitudinal beam, sometimes you will find that beams are also too much loaded. So because of that reason, we general rule is we try to keep about two beams per lane. Uh, altogether three beams supporting a lane. Three beams supporting a lane. 
So because the lane width is three meters, so we can actually go for something like a 1.5 meter spacing for all. And then, uh, then once you do this, because we are loading uh, with three meter span, uh, three meter wide uh, roads. So you can see even 1.5 meter uniform spacing also can work very well. So uh, these are the kind of information you might like to share. And uh, so if you look at a bridge, wide bridge, you might find that we can go for uh, multiples of 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5, 1.5. And here you get center of this is 3.75. So you can repeat the, this side with this side, and then you can get a solution. So always keep in mind, uh, we are pre-casting, so the lifting operation is important. If you have a crane, no problem, no restriction, but if you have don't have a crane, people will have to handle this, so, so you have to be a little careful. Even during pre-casting, they have to handle it. So, so don't make them too big, too, not too wide, not too long, because, uh, because we have to make sure there are adequate number of uh, structural beams to transfer the loads onto the two supporting members, maybe two abutments or abutment of pier. So because of this reason, uh, we generally uh, like to see a spacing of about 1.5 meters maximum. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Uh, right. So with that, shall I conclude? Uh, so today yes, I have, I took little time because, you know, there may be some who are not very familiar with Euro code. So that's why I explain how to calculate the reinforcement because uh, without knowing how to calculate the reinforcement for Euro code, you cannot actually um, do a design complying with Euro code. So once you learn how to uh, be, uh, how to calculate the reinforcement, quantity. As for your code, you can easily design a reinforced concrete beam, a beam slab bridge. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Right. So uh, uh, next week onwards, uh, we'll uh, move on to uh, other types of bridges and uh, somebody has requested structural analysis as well. So uh, either next week or following week, I will uh, produce a village and then show you how to find the bending moments, shear forces, and torsional moments as well. Okay. Okay, sir. Right. Uh, okay. Thank you. I would like to yeah. invite uh, engineer Joga Prajapan uh, to deliver the word of thank. Uh, good evening, participants. Uh, it's great pleasure to propose the word of thanks for this valuable session with topic of uh, design uh, designing cost effective and durable reinforced concrete bridges as for uh, Euro codes. Uh, I would like to express our gratitude for our distinguished uh, presenter, Professor uh, Tishan Jaisinga, Senior Professor, Civil Engineer Department, University of Moratua, uh, for your informa informative lecture, sir. Uh, then I would I wish to thank Engineer Kamala Gonavadana for your uh, support as uh, President of Civil Sectional Committee. Uh, and in addition, I extend my thanks to Engineer Banduka and Technical Events uh, Subcommittee and IT and Technical Officials of Institute of Engineers Sri Lanka for organizing this lecture. Uh, thank you. Thank you for all the participants. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for this. Thank you. 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 Uh, to share the handwritten pages, is it possible? Uh, handwritten pages, I think I might have to uh, take a photo and share it with you. Uh -huh. And actually, it is on the rec recorded video as well. Uh, yeah, recorded some, video someone has captured a... most of it, but uh, yeah. we can actually, I can take a photo and send it. Uh, shall I do it tomorrow? Oh, that's fine, sir. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, no hurry. Yeah. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay. okay Thank, you very, Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.